You're now in the hands of the pulpit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Because you've allowed us to be together one more time. We exalt thee and praise thee, O oh God, because you allowed us to sing together one more time. We exalt thee and praise thee, O oh God, because you allowed me to shake your hand, see your face one more time. That's why we exalt thee, O oh Lord. We worship thee and praise thee, O oh God. We exalt thee, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm exalting God today. I'm glorifying God today. Hallelujah. Bless God. Bless God today. Bless God today. Praise his name today. Amen. And we say welcome to Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church, a loving church that cares for you and is reaching out in love. To all those who are watching online, to our online host, Linda Sherman, and all the online, we greet you and welcome you that you're spending part of your day with the Greater Faith Church family of like precious faith. And again, I want to encourage those who are online, and to some of you, are, that's your only option is to be online because of situation, conditions that you have no control over, and therefore you're online. I understand that. But anytime you have the opportunity and God grants the ability, come in person. Be in person. There's nothing like being in person, see a face, touch a face, and be with a person in person. We encourage you to uh, be in person as much as possible. And because we want to just connect with one another and with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God, amen. Praise God. And uh, it's been a great week this week. Uh, our men, some, some of our men went to a powerful, dynamic, uh, breathtaking men's conference on Friday and Saturday. And it's so awesome to watch over a thousand men of like precious faith worshiping God, calling on God. Surrendering back to surrendering to God and just realizing our brokenness, our failures, our flaws, and need restoration, healing emotionally and spiritually and mentally. And God touched hearts on Friday night. Amen. And also on Saturday morning. And then we had the opportunity, many of our some of our members, we went to watch the movie uh, Forge yesterday up at the uh, Renaissance and uh, Went through the motion roller coaster of, of crying and laughing and weeping, but got a profound message, amen, that uh, the gospel changes lives and it's more than just uh, getting saved, it's becoming a devoted, dedicated, determined follower of Jesus Christ, being a disciple. Yes, be, be, getting saved is easy. Discipleship is costly. Amen. So it was, it was really a, a great time. And then the day we gathered this morning, and afterwards we have a, a wonderful meal. Today is on our every fifth Sunday is family, faith, friends, and food fellowship. And we thank God for all the beautiful people who brought food today. And uh, if you didn't bring food, you still can share with us. Amen. Because we got it, you got it, amen? <laughs> our, our food is your food, amen? So just, well, I didn't bring that kid. No, no, it's not about that, amen. We don't care if you can, we just want, want to, we just want to have time of fellowship in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. It's so good to hear the great singing and all that's going on here. Oh, and by the way, we, the nursery, if we have a nursery ready for those that little babies. You can take your babies uh, back to the nursery. We do have a Lydia Alexander, and uh, she's going to, Help with the babies back there. So little children, little babies, uh, you're welcome to take them back to the nurse at this time right here. Amen. And Usher, uh, uh, Jesse will show you the way back to the nurse. Those want to take your babies back there. So you can have the freedom to uh, worship God without your distractions. Amen. So it's up to you. That's your 
one of, that is provided back to every, every Sunday for a nursery. Uh, just a little quick aside, though, I, I, about a few weeks ago, well, a few months ago, I was sharing with you about, uh, was going through the Word of God, and we're going through the book of, uh, at that time, and I talked about spiritual disciplines, and I encourage you to, uh, for the next 30 days, to practice some spiritual disciplines, and there were six of them, and hopefully, uh, I hear, I hear some testimonies maybe next week about how it helped and changed your life. I gave you six spiritual disciplines. And if you don't know them, that means you haven't been practicing them. <laughs> hey, man, if you, if, and if they're, in the, they're in the message a few weeks, so you just look back and reread things. I want to just encourage us. That's the key to being a, a uh, dynamic Christian life and living in victory is to practice spiritual disciplines. Reading God's word, praying, meditating, fasting, serving, giving up your uh, financial resources, worshiping God. Those who practice not periodically, but day in and day out, every, every opportunity you got to use those spiritual disciplines there. Man, God bless you. Let us pray. We're, we're getting to God's word so we can uh, be fed with the true living word of God. Man, so we'll, we'll be, uh, leave out the day, we'll be doubly fat. <laughs> Amen. Fat on the word and fat on the food. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because one thing, uh, uh, you, may, you may take a, go on a, on a food diet, but never go on a word diet. <laughs> and I think too many believers on a word diet. Mm, right. Amen. Get off that word diet. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Food diet's fine, but never get on a word diet. Amen. You need the word every day. Get fat on the word. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the multitude of your tender mercies, in our brokenness, in our pains, our hurts, our griefs, our joys and our sorrows. And we still consider it an honor and a blessing to gather with people of like precious faith, to be encouraged, to be challenged, to be corrected, to be examined, O oh God, that our lives will fall in line and compliance with your word, your will, and your ways. And I just pray, Father, once we leave this place today, that, that we'll be more fully committed more available to be used by you, that you make it all the glory and the praise. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 As we continue preaching and sharing and encouraging the church online in person, the necessity and the need for evangelism, today I will continue on with that theme. We had some great men of God preaching last few weeks on that topic right then, so we're going to continue in that same area there with the uh, evangelism, because that, that is a key right there, uh, is getting the gospel out. You know, uh, in my times of, of witnessing, I have, uh, I have uh, had some doors slammed in my face in witnessing and knocking on doors and talking to people. I've had some people just plain walk away. I've had some people just yell at me and say, I don't want to hear that or anything about God, the Bible, the church, or being a Christian. Been rejected. But I realized they were not rejecting me. They were rejecting the word of God. But I've never been physically attacked, threatened, arrested, or put in prison. And here in America, it don't happen to many of us today. But there are some 
isolated incidents in America where it is happening where men who are preaching the gospel have been put in prison. And just recently, uh, a pastor in Seattle, Washington, was arrested. His name is Pastor Matthew Minicky, but he won, but through uh, the uh, first uh, Liberty uh, Law Group, uh, he won the legal battle. And so what, uh, and so, so he got complete relief from the uh, situation, wrongful arrest. And what happened was this pastor, he was uh, in front of abortion clinic, Planned Parenthood, and just simply reading God's word. Reading God's word. And so the police came up, and they arrested him, and they uh, put him in, in jail. And uh, that's all he was doing right there. He was arrested twice just for reading God's word. Made no threats. Other people made threats to him, attacked him. They were not put in prison or jail locked up, but he was. But thanks be to God for our Liberty uh, Law Firm that they took the case and they won the case. And he got a substantial settlement from the city of, from the city of, city of Seattle for this he arresting him for violation, uh, for violation of, of his rights there. And, and which reminds us when Jesus already said in Matthew 21, 7, 21, 17, he said, you, meaning you believers, disciples, you will be hated by all because of my name. So it's, it's a promise. It's a promise. And see, the Bible is full of promises. Some promise we like to hear. God, I'm with, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. You're my shepherd. You're my Lord. You're my supplier. Those are good promises. But he says stuff like, you will be hated by all men. I don't like that promise. But it's a promise, and God fulfills that. Amen. Uh, John, Jesus said in John 15, 18 through 19, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this world, because of this, the world hates you. And what's amazing, we as believers are accused of hate crimes, of being hatred. If we don't go along with things the world says, or going with their culture, or going against their ideas, we, we call it hate speech. We hate them. But they're what hating us. They hate what we're saying, we're doing for Jesus Christ. They're the ones that hate, but, but it's in them, not us. We love them. John 17, 14 says, Jesus in prayer says, I gave them your word, and the world has hated them because they're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We're hated. We're not liked. We're not welcomed by the world. And then in uh, 1 John 3, 1, it says, uh, see how great a love, I say great a love. Great a, see how great a love how great a love how the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God. That's a great love. And such as we are, for this reason, the world does not know us. Why? Because it did not know him. When the world knows God, then they know us. It's because of that they hate us. Now, in our, in our sacred scripture, we find the apostles of Jesus personally experiencing the fulfillment of the words of Jesus Christ, Messiah, in those aforementioned Bible verses there. Along with this one right here. In Luke 21, 10 through 12, it says, Then he continues saying to them, Nations will rise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes. Had a couple other day here. Fontana, what, Northern California? In various places, plagues and famines, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Here's 
but, everybody say but. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and will persecute you, delivering you into the synagogues and prisons, bringing before you kings and governors for my name's sake. Here was the apostles experiencing all the prophetic words that Jesus Christ has spoken. That's why Jesus Christ is prophet, king, and priest. All those words right there. So let's open our Bibles or our mobile apps to a sacred passage of scripture located in Acts chapter 5, verse 17 to 21. Reverend Dingle used the first part of these verses last week talking about the miracles, the signs, how God used it to bring people to Jesus Christ. And then we're going to look at, uh, at this passage right here from 17, chapter, Acts chapter 5. Be up on the board there too, chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. This is after I encountered with Ananias and, uh, and Peter and John had, had did the healing, and many people believed, and uh, more people. And Lord, adding people to the church, and people, even the sick folks carried out, and uh, they're being healed by, even by the shadow of Peter. And uh, people from, uh, were coming together and, was, and were sick and afflicted, and they were all being healed. And then we pick up at verse 17. When all this happening here, but the high priest rose up along with the associates, they had the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy. They laid hands on the apostles and put them in a public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the gates of the prison, taking them out. He said, go, stand and speak to the people of the temple the whole message of this life. Upon hearing this, they entered, the, they entered into the temple. I'm going to stop right now. There. Yeah. I'm going to title um, this evangelistic message A Bold Witness About the Whole Message of This Life. A Bold Witness About the Whole Message of This Life. That's what they were doing there. The Bible says in a Proverbs 21, eight, just a little reference right here, the wicked flee when no one is pursuing, but the righteous bold as a lion. That's why I don't jog. Because the wicked flee when no one's pursuing. <laughs> just something I thought it out there for y'all. <laughs> Gotta laugh sometimes, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the, the apostles had come into direct contact with the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ had promised them back in Acts 1 8. The Reverend Daniel preached a few weeks ago. But you receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in both Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, even to the remotest parts of the earth. So that's what the apostles were doing. They had experienced the power of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. They had this power in them, and now they're being a witness. And so the apostle Peter and John were doing exactly what they had been called to do and empowered by the Holy Ghost. They were preaching a gospel. I say preaching. Preaching, preaching a gospel of the kingdom, and people were repenting, believing the gospel, getting baptized, and many were experiencing miraculous healings by the power of Jesus' name. They were doing exactly what God, what Jesus had promised them back in Acts 1.8. When the power of the Holy Ghost was upon them, they would be witnessed, and they were doing exactly that. Amen. And they were doing that, and they were and preaching and teaching the word of God, and people being saved and healed. And what happened was, by them doing this right here, this created envy and jealousy among the Sadducees 
and some of their companions. See, that the Sadducees were a very uh, influential uh, Jewish group, and they were very wealthy. And because, uh, because their wealth, uh, many of them had some high priestly privileges. And they, they were more of a, of a political party, and they wanted to maintain power and control of the people. The other group, the Pharisees, were more of the religious type, but, but the Sadducees were more of a political group right there, and they had great wealth and power and things like that, so they wanted to maintain that political power there. And so when people were becoming followers of Jesus Christ, uh, that means they'd be losing some of their power and authority over the people, and they were not about to let this happen. Like the old saying goes, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so they want to maintain control of the people. But if these people start following Jesus, they're not going to follow me anymore. I'm going to lose control. And so they were not allowed, but it happened, and they became jealous of the apostles. Jealous of the apostles. Jealous. And that is still goes on today. People are still jealous. And what, what is, and uh, jealousy, we've got a little digress. Jealousy, just to give a definite, definite, you probably know it already, but just an easement right here. Jealousy is basically a strong feelings of possessiveness. That is caused by the possibility that something which belongs or ought to belong to you is being taken away. It's a strong feeling of possessiveness that you want to possess something. And it's caused by the possibility of that something which belongs or ought to belong to you is being taken away. You feel I own this. This is mine. It belongs to me. And, and instead of being taken away, there's a jealousy right there. And now also, you see, well, God was jealousy. Yes, but see, there is two sides of jealousy. There is a positive side and the negative side. Amen. The word in a positive side is the jealousy of God, meaning, meaning God has a passionate commitment to something that rightly belongs to him. And see, God has saved us. We're his people. He paid the price for us. Amen. And we rightly belong to him. Amen. And so, and in, all, in a negative sense, human jealousy means a self-destructive human emotions like envy. It's self-destructive. So there's a negative side and a positive side to jealousy. And, and this is what the Bible says about jealousy. The scriptures, not what I said, the, the Bible. So I hope you got your pens. I hope you guys are taking some notes here because I want you always to get your pens, pencils out, and take notes. Write things down. So come back and read them later. Here's what the Bible says about jealousy. In James 3.14, but if you have bitter jealousy, so you can have jealousy and, and keep it up, it'll go becoming Bitter. Bitter. Just a little, little medical note right here. It's been said and somewhat proven that people who are bitter, they can trace it back sometimes to cancer. Having to live a bitter life, so give it a bitterness. That's why Paul says, give it all bitterness and wrath. It says, but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. Don't think it's all yours. The truth is God owns everything. Amen. And James 3.16 says, where there, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. Every evil thing in jealousy. Say it again. For where jealousy is, there's selfish ambitions, there is disorder and every evil thing. Think about it. When a person is jealous, that's disorder. It's evil. They, they will do anything to maintain that control, that power. There's disorder. There's disorder around. 
Some of you have maybe been in this situation with a jealous husband or wife or, or, or friend, something like that, and jealous, and it creates all kinds of problems in your life. Jealousy. And then later in the book of Acts, Paul experienced jealousy from the Jews. In Acts 13, 45, it says, But when, the, when Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to contra- contradict the, the things spoken by Paul and were blaspheming. Paul experienced that jealousy. And, and, and when, it comes, when it comes to human jealousy, people, we have to look no further than the suffix of the last five letters, which spell L-O-U-S-Y, lousy. Jealousy is lousy. <laughs> Y'all got that? Jealousy is lousy. The last five words says, it's L-O-U-S-Y. Anybody that has jealousy, they're lousy. Remember that, people. If somebody comes and you find they're jealous, we're like, they're they just lousy. Amen. If some of you are jealous, you're lousy. If, you, if, you, if you're jealous of somebody, you're just lousy. Amen. So don't be lousy. Don't be jealous because it creates all kinds of problems right there. And so because of the, of the jealousy, they put the apostles in prison. See what jealousy does? Amen. The apostles, Peter, lived out of, by him being in jail. Check this out. By the apostle Peter being in jail, he lived out a promise he had made to Jesus Christ before Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. Sometimes we say something, you know, how, how it may come to pass. The Bible says you should be condemned by the words of your mouth. Amen? Here's what Peter said back, back in, back in uh, tw- Luke 22, 31 to 34. Uh, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when, and you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brother. That sounded great. Jesus prayed for me. That Satan does not sift me like we destroy me and mess me all up. And when I'm turning, I'm, I'm going to strengthen. If Peter would just heard right there and shut up, he'd have been fine. He'd been okay. But no, you know in Peter, he always got to say something, amen. He got to say what he does right here. But he said to him, Lord, Lord, with you I am ready to go both to prison and to death. And even Acts 5.19, where yet? <laughs> Going to prison. <laughs> Going to prison. Promise fulfilled. And he said, I think Peter, before the rooster crows, Roots not crow then until you deny me three times. That's what he said. So I'm saying, people, things that we say, we condemn by the words of our mouth. So, here, so now they're in, they're in prison now. And so, it, so the, the action of putting the apostles in jail, it was to detain them. And then on the next day, they would show, give an example of what would happen to anyone else who had any thoughts or ideas about preaching, about Jesus Christ, his Lord, and that he was died, was buried, and rose up from the dead, and he is the only way to salvation. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make Peter and James an example. So if any of y'all have any ideas, any thoughts of preaching about Jesus Christ being the Son of God, the way to salvation, and doing things in his name there, what will happen to Peter and James in the morning, the same is coming your way. That was, the, that, was, that was their plan. That was their plan. But here's the thing right here. It says, after, it says, after they, had, they had laid hands and put, put the pulse in jail. Put them in jail. It says right here. They laid hands on the apostles, 
put them in a public jail. And see, after that, after that situation, here comes one of the many profound, life-changing, dynamic buts of the word. Everybody say but. But. Put them in prison. We got them locked away. They'll be safe until tomorrow morning. And we'll come tomorrow morning, bring them out of prison, bring them before the court, and, and, we will, and we will show the world happen to these two men right here. They had their plans, but. Somebody say but. 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 But during the night, hallelujah, an angel of the Lord opened the gates of the prison and taking them out. He's taking them out. But. 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 That's powerful, huh? That is powerful. You know, in fact, in fact uh, you, you ought to, you ought to j- j- just do a, a Bible search and see all, 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 all the busts of the scripture. Right? I, I'm going to walk you through a few right now, amen? So y'all bear with me, praise God. Just see all these here, just a few butts in the scripture right here. Romans 5, 6 and 8 says, For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one would hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God. But God. we go to another one right here. Romans 6.23. For the wage of sin is death. But God, but the free gift of eternal life is Christ Jesus our Lord. Another but right there. Another right there. Here's another right here. You know, sometimes uh, we're on our knees trying to call out to God, wondering what can I say? So heavy burden. Don't know. God knows all things. God sees all things. What do I say? Romans 8.26 says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray this year, but, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Those times when you don't know what to say, how are you going to say it? What you going to pray to God? But, Hallelujah. Y'all should be shouting right now. But, but. 1 Corinthians 9, 6, 9 to 11 says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infamous, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, no revilers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you, which some of which some of you were like that, but <laughs> but you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. You were like that, but. But, but you were washed, you were sanctified. Hallelujah. So when you see somebody out there acting like a nutbug and all locked in sin, you was like that, but you've been washed. You've been sanctified. Hallelujah. Bless God, amen. Here's some more, another some more. Isn't isn't the blessing y'all real good here? Just about the, I mean, that is such a powerful, life-changing word right there. And those buts in the scripture right here. Here's some more right here. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, 
but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. Glory to God, people. Glory to God. Those are shouting things right there. All the buts in the scripture right there. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I'm saying we can write a book, teach a bunch of messages, and preach more to the messages about the impacts of the buts in the Bible. <laughs> That's why God's word is inexhaustible. You always got something to say, man. Oh, we got something to say, praise God. And think about it. And people, before we became a Christian, a saint, a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ, then and now our lives should be full of buts. Amen. 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 We, I mean, and, <laughs> and we got some big butts too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody, somebody has some great big butts in our life. Amen. Amen. Some great big ones there. And they have been life changing. They have been life changing. Amen. Perhaps you were sick and the doctor and all they could, but God healed you. We have a testimony right now. Person locked up in jail. Thought they would never get out. But God. But God. But God. Open the prison doors and let you out. Man. Perhaps you've been deeply hurt by somebody. Offended by family or friend. But God was there to strengthen, help, heal, and pick you up. Amen. There have been times you know you should have been dead. Should have lost your life. But God. But God. Watch over you and kept you and protected you. Wow. But God. But God. Every time you look at your life, just say, but God. But God. Didn't have no money to pay my rent. Bills are sky high. But God. But God, but God, but God did it. Was confused, hooked on drugs, alcohol. Nobody wanted me. Nobody would be around me. I was tore from the floor. But God yeah. reached down and delivered me, yeah. saved and turned me around. But God. Mama couldn't do it. Daddy couldn't do it. Friends couldn't do it. Programs couldn't do it. But God, in his grace and mercy, did it. I'm saying, is, I'm saying people, our life is full of the buts. And you know something? Even if you can't think, some of you just pray and say, Lord, I don't remember it all, but Lord, but I thank you for the butts in my life. <laughs> for the butts in my life, amen. Because think about it. If it wasn't for the butts in your life, where would you be right now? Huh? If God had not put some butts in your life and in my life, where would you be right now? Where would your life be right now? Brother Jay got a testimony. Anitra got a testimony. You heard Reverend Daniel's testimony about being homeless in the car. But God. But God. But God. But God. But God. But God. Praise God, amen. I could almost stop right here, huh? So people, I just praise God and look back on my life. But I, can't, I, cannot count all, I cannot count all the but gods in my life. How many of y'all can count all the but gods in your life? <laughs> the but gods in your life. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. 
Glory. God, I praise you. If it wasn't for the butts in my life, where would I be now? Let me try to wind it on down a little bit here, prayerfully. And like I said, in Acts 5.19, that was one of the but, but then the angel of the Lord appeared, and the gates were open. The prison was open. God can open the gates. The prison was open right here. A life lesson. It says, but God, it's an angel of the Lord, at night, and opened the gates. Life lesson. Your darkest times, those night times, can become your brightest moments. Those times when things are dark and you're locked away, you're locked up in some situation, condition, they feel there's no way out. God is still a miracle-working God. He can deliver you from those dark hours when you're in shackles and bondage. As his child, as his servant, God can deliver you and become your brightest moment. Angel of the Lord came. Angel of the Lord is an angel that God used for, for a specific tasks to further God's purpose among humanity. It could be like uh, giving, giving revelations, guidance, encouragement, warnings, and also execution of judgment of those who oppose God's purposes. Angels. Now, what the angel of the Lord did was a powerful, say powerful, powerful, powerful testament of God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty, providence, and care for his faithful servants. And many of you who, who are reading along with me in the Bible through, through the connecting New, New Testaments, you'll find many of the uh, questions that I put out there is, uh, where do you see God's sovereignty? Because I, I, I'm trying to save people. I want to make sure, above all else, we see the sovereign hand of God. Meaning God's in full, total, and complete control. Every situation, every circumstance. When we truly understand, embrace, and receive, understand the sovereignty of God, everything else practically goes away. We're like, God, you are sovereign and your full, total control. When we begin to think that God is not in control, we get frantic, fearful, and afraid. All those things happen right there. So it's the sovereignty of God, amen. And so that's, and so uh, it, it allows, so, uh, so, this, so people, this should remind you and me of Christ present with us in trials, assuring us that as we obey his call, it be accomplished through supernatural support and guidance. So my fellow saints, my fellow believers, my fellow followers of Jesus Christ, amen. We must see acts of obedience. Acts of obedience. They were obedient. They were preaching God's word. Acts of obedience as opportunity that God will reveal to us his power and his love. And that, and that should lead you and me into a deeper faith and joy Deeper faith and joy. When we, when we obey God and see God at work in miraculous ways, obedience, amen. See, what these people are trying to do, we're trying to stop the plans of God. But Psalms 33.10 says, the Lord nullifies the counts of nations. He frustrates the plans of people. He made what they would do, he nullified it. And first of the plans are bringing them before the, the council on, on, on the next day there. So people, here's what happened. See, now that when you have seen and experienced the supernatural power of God, that God has set you free from your shackles and prison, what happens then, look, he says, he, he set them free. When God sets you free from the shackles of prison, sin, all those things, deliverance, you now have a purpose, a mission, and an assignment. God didn't just save you, deliver you, 
and set you free without having a purpose for you, a mission, or an assignment. That's why I did it, amen. And see, life lesson. When God saved you, delivered you, and set you free, did a miracle, did a miracle, he gave you a purpose, I said, a mission and an assignment. And what is that there? It is the same purpose, the same mission, the same assignment that the angel of the Lord gave the apostles after opening the prison gates and taking them out. The same purpose, mission, assignment God's giving us when he opened the gates of heaven. Hallelujah. And took us in because of our faith in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what is that mission? What is that purpose? What is that assignment? He says in Acts 5.20, Go, stand, and speak to the people, speak to the people in the temple, the whole message. Everybody say whole message. The whole message of this life. So he gave three commands. Go, stand, and speak. It says, go, stand, and speak. It says, go, stand, and speak. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Go, stand, and speak. To who? The people. Young people. Old people. Rich people. Poor people. Male and female. Non-binary. Black. (laughs) White. Brown. Yellow. Red. Any culture, nationality, the good, the bad, the ugly, speak to the people. Go, stand, and speak to the people. What would it do? Go, stand, speak. Mm. Go, stand, and speak where? In the temple, in the workplace, in the marketplace, cyberspace, social place, prisons, Hospital at church, go and speak to the people. Where are these people that speak? We're not hermits. We're not living out, out on some island by ourselves. We're not in some cave hid away someplace. There's people all around us on the phones, in the marketplace, workplace, all around people. The world is full of people. So, in other words, we have all kinds of opportunities to go and speak to the people. Speak to the people. Speak to them. Speak to them. Go stand and speak to them. They had the boldness. They obeyed the word of God. Now, we go and speak to who? The people. Go and speak where? In the temple, the workplace, the marketplace, cyberspace, schoolhouse, social place, prison, hospital, anywhere there's people, go speak. And then go and speak what? What are we to speak? The whole message of this life. The whole message of this life. Not what you want to say. Not a part or a piece in it. The whole message. Everybody say whole message. The whole message of this life. The whole message, amen. And, I, and knowing Peter and them being versed in the scriptures, and they had also the words of Jesus Christ, the whole message of this life here, uh, you can start with Genesis 2-7. Then, I'm going to give you some things about life, okay? I'm going to give you some words about life, okay? The message of life. Starting in Genesis 2-7. The Lord, then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of Life. That's the message. The breath of life. And man became a living being. Hope you got your, hope you got your word out. Your pencils out. Write some scriptures down here. Psalm 1611. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness and joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forever. That's the message of this life. 
That's part of the whole message, right? Psalm 27.1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? That's life. That's the message of life right there. And then, not on, not on the Peter and John knew some Old Testament verse. I mean, there's, there's a lot more than that. But also remember the words that Jesus Christ had spoke while he was among them. Things like Matthew 7, 14. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. Say it again. The gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are a few who find it. I also heard Jesus Christ said this right in Matthew 10, 10, 39. He who has found his life will lose it. And who has lost his life, for my sake, will find it. That's the message of this life. Y'all getting that? That's a bold witness right there. The message of, of this life. Heard me say probably in, in, Mark, in Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That's the message of, of this life here. John 1, 4 says, Peter, the words also, in him was life, we're in Jesus Christ. In Jesus is life, and the life was the light of men. Life. Again, people... Get a concordance out and just do a walk through the word life. It'll bless you. When I say read God's word, read God's word, study God's word, it is so powerful, so impactful. It is life-changing, amen. And we all know that John 3, 15 and 16. So whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal. That's the message of life, amen. That's the message right there. John 3.36 says, He who believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not obey the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. People, I just want to give you a, a boatload of verses of Scripture because let me tell you something. The only thing, a few, a few weeks, months ago, years ago, the only thing that you hear inspired is the Word of God. I can say things, illustrations, that, that, that at some point they, they could uh, not uh, they run to logical conclusions sometimes. But the Word of God does not return void. I may say something to illustrate here and there, and maybe, but God's Word. See, even when I'm God, you can still look up. You, you remember what I said, but you can look up God's word and see what God said. That's most of it. See, most of it is not what I say, but what God's word says. Moving on down, John 4, 14 says, But whoever drinks of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water, springing up to eternal life. And he said, go and speak the whole message of this life. Other words that he said right here, uh, John 5, 21. For just as the Father raised up the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. Life. John 5, 24 says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life right now and does not come into judgment because he has passed out of death to life. People, that's the whole message of this life that the angel telling uh, Peter and John to go preach in the temple, anybody, anywhere. John 10, 10 to 11 says, the thief, the devil, comes only to rob, to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 
That's the word of God, people. That's God's word. That's God's word. Move on some more here. Saying, Pastor, I ain't heard these, these scriptures all, all week. I know that's why you're here today. It's <laughs> yeah. right here, right now. Hear the word of God. Amen. John 10, 15 says, even as a father knows me, and I know the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Life. It's life, people. God wants to give us life, 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 life. John 10, 17 says, for this reason, the father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. That's the word, amen. John 10, 28 says, I give, them, I give eternal life to them. And they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. That's life. That's life, people. That's life. John eleven twenty five 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me lives even if he dies. People, I hope this is a blessing. I'm trying to give you the word of God. This, is gonna, this will change your life. There's a hope in the future. It's the word of God. John 12, 25 says, he who loves his life, lose it. And he who hates his life in the world to come will keep it to life eternal. And many of us know John 14, 6. Jesus said to them, I am the way and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That's what Jesus said. Go and, go and speak. All the whole message of this life here. Do not exclude it. This is about life. God wants to give us life. Amen. And I have a, I have a two more verses right here. And here's the big one right here. John 17, 3. This is eternal life. This is eternal life. Nothing else. This is eternal life. Nothing else matters. That they may know you, know God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That's intimate, personal knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. That's eternal, that you may know him. Otherwise, if you don't know God, intimate, personally, you don't have eternal life. And then John says in John 20, 31. You got the people, you got the Bible, you got the gospel, you got the Old Testament, New Testament. And John gives us the reason why the book was written. John 20, 31. He says, but these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That's why the word of God is written, that we might have life in his name. So after obeying those, after hearing that, they obeyed in verse 20. Upon hearing that entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Begin to teach. Begin to teach, amen. Let me just conclude in the conclusion, right, applications here now. Four things right here. See, in Acts 5, 20, 21, what we see is the apostles being miraculously freed from prison by the angel of the Lord, who instructs them to go and speak to the temple about the message of eternal life. And, that, and, he, and here's about four things that we can conclude and drop in this right here, truths and applications. Okay. Number one, think about divine intervention and protection. What this does here, what it does, basically, it lets us know, hallelujah, the reality of divine intervention in the lives of believers. God can divine in intervene in our lives as he so pleased in, in his divine sovereignty. The angel's deliverance from the apostles from prison, what it does, people, it shows, it demonstrates God's power and sovereignty of all circumstances. There's nothing, there's no condition or situation that you may find yourself in that God is not sovereign and control over. He's sovereign, amen. And this also reminds us, praise God, that God is able to protect 
and deliver us in any situation because God is sovereign. Number two, oh, this has to be obedience to God's call. Obedience to God's call. And, and the apostles, did, they immediately obeyed the instructions that the angel had given them. Even though, even though risk was involved, it was risky. They already, they already been locked up. Now you can go out and still speak? Still going to speak the same thing? You've been locked up? And you still going to speak? That, that took bold witnessing. And going back in the same, go, return to the scene of the crime to do it again. And this teaches us the importance of obeying God, even in difficult or dangerous situations. Obeying God. It also demonstrates the apostles had courage and faith. See, being a bold witness, it takes courage and faith. It takes courage and faith right there. And thirdly, it's about proclaiming the message of eternal life. He knows the angel specifically instructs the apostles, specifically instructs to speak to the people in the temple the message of eternal life. See, that's, people, that's what witness is about. We tell them the message of eternal life, that Jesus Christ, God's Son, came into a, a broken, sinful, wrecked world to redeem us, give us life, a substance for our sins, down or cross, become ugly, that we, that, we, that, we, that we could become beautiful, became sin, that we, that we might become righteous, became poor, that we, that we might become rich, became all the ugliness of us, that we become all the good in Christ Jesus. And so we, we obey that right there. Faith, faith, faith. The, to speak eternal life. Amen. And this hides the importance of sharing the gospel. Sharing the gospel. Now, uh, see the boldness of them? Already been attacked, put in prison, but that did not deter them. So people are saying this right here. Let nothing deter us from sharing the gospel. One of two things. Either we fear man or we obey God. Either we fear man or we obey God. Either fear man or obey God. That's a choice you have to make. Am I, am I going to be afraid of this person right here, of what they may think about me, say about me, do to me, or am I going to fear the fact that God called me, loves me, I want to please him. Amen. See, many people need to hear the gospel message. And what it does, it, 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 just, it just transforms lives. All of us have been transformed by the power of the gospel. Amen. It changes the hearts and brings, and brings people to faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the gospel does right there. And what it does, in, in witnessing, we just trust in the power of God. Not in my ability, in the power of God, the word of God that brings about truth there. Salvation transforms lives. So, that, so in, in our witnessing and our walking with Christ, there could be divine intervention as we obey God's call. Just proclaim the gospel. It, it brings about salvation. It brings about hope. Amen. Trust God for his protection. Trust God in all things. Amen. amen. The power to bring about change. Father, in the name of Jesus. We live in a time right now, Lord God, where the word of God, the word of truth, our faith is under constant and consistent attack, Father. But I just pray, God, even as you give us the boldness, the courage, oh God, to be able to say, for God I live and for God I die. Father, we, we just want to be fully committed available to be used by you. And Lord, we, you may put us in very hard and difficult places and spaces. But Father, we want to be able to please you at any cost. I know, Lord, God, during the week, we're going to be in the workplace, the marketplace, social space, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, walking by in the streets, the highways. And Lord, give us the boldness and the courage to be brave and bold, confident and courageous, O oh God, 
to know that you are with us as we share the whole message of this life. Not holding back. Giving it all to you, Father. And Lord, we trust that whatever comes our way, through, the, through our witnessing and being bold for you, Lord, that you are sovereign, you're providential, you care for us, and we know, God, we can trust your protection and your deliverance, oh God. Because your word tells us, if we're ashamed of you before men, you'll be ashamed of us before your Father in heaven. So, God, I pray again, Lord, all of us here today that dwells online, let us march out, Father, with that courage, that faith, that hope, oh God. Say, whatever may come, so it may come my way, we're going to stand and speak the word of God, the truth of God's word. And, Father, I know that through that, lives will be changed dramatically and drastically because, God, our lives will change because someone took the time to speak to us the word of God, the word of truth. Thank you, Father, for letting us hear the whole message of this life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise. Amen. 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 Now, time for someone here today. Either connect with God, reconnect with God are being encouraged to stay connected. What does that mean? Somebody here today in person or online, you've never in your life come to a point where you saw yourself as a depraved, wretched sinner, apart from God, where you didn't try to uh, rationalize it, deny it, or defend your way of life. Will you fully admit that, yes, Lord, I have broken your commandments. I have broken your laws. I have lied. I've cheated. I've stolen. I've had jealousy, envy, rage. I've done just things. I've used your name in vain. I've had lustful thoughts, envy, all those things. Lord, I, I just did things. That, even, though, even though they were they maybe were legal, but in reality, they were not moral. But I did them. Because, God, you have a moral law, and we disobeyed that. When I see myself in your holiness and your righteousness and your purity, I see you high and lifted up. When I see myself, I say, whoa, it's me. And I realize that I need a Savior. I need my life transformed. I need to stop trying to fake it. I think I'm okay, but inside I know I'm like dead means, dead means bones. Outside I may look good and smell, but inside... I, I stink. Outside, you can look at me and see a smile on my face and happiness and joy. And, but inside, I know. At the core of my heart, at the core of my being, I stink. And only you, God, can take that stink out of my heart and my life and make it right. I tried this, I tried that. But I come to you today, Father, saying, Lord, I believe the gospel. I know I'm a sinner. I'm going to believe the gospel. I repent. I repent. What does repentance mean? I'm going to turn away from my sins, my way of thinking, my way of doing things, and turn to Jesus Christ, him alone, for hope and faith and love. I repent. I'm going to believe the gospel that Jesus Christ lived, he died, he was buried, and he rose again and went to heaven. I believe in all my heart that if I put my faith in him and trust in him, I will have eternal life. And no one snatched up by my father's hand. I know for certain for sure that when I die, I will go to heaven. And as a sign of that repentance and belief and faith in Christ, I'm going to take the next step that is to get baptized. And then I'm going to become part of a local church where I can work out my salvation with fear and trembling and live a life that pleases God, doing God's will. If that's you today, simply I believe. That's the start right there. And you know because your life has changed, you, you now begin to love the things of God and begin to hate the things of the world. 
begin to love the people of God, begin to love God's word, you begin to love to pray, love to see God's face, you have a hunger for God. That's your heart, right? You'll know it. You will know it. And then some of you right now, you, you've been connected with God, but through life and things happening, you got disconnected. You dropped the car, whatever it may be. You fumbled the football, whatever it may be. And, you, and, you, and, you didn't re- and now it's time that you can recover the right now, amen. Come back to God and reconnect with him. Just simply saying, God, I was carrying the football, but I got hit hard and I fumbled it. I got hit from behind and I fumbled the football. But God, I want to recover right now. Come back to you. And then thirdly, those who are connected with God, I encourage you. Keep on going, standing, and speaking the word of God, the whole message of this life and living it out. And don't worry about the outcome. God got you, and God will take care of you. Just stand firm in the faith and keep on walking with God. And again, for those who connect or reconnect, here's what you need to do. Come online. Let me know, and I will send you a link to come online at 6 o'clock this evening. I'm going to take you through a new member's orientation class to show you the things of God. That's the prayer right now. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And now I'm going to pray for those who need prayer in the audience right now. What are you up against or struggling with or battling with or having a struggle with? Maybe it's boldness, courage, faith, issue situations. I want to pray for you right now. I want to lift your name before the Lord and pray with you and pray for you. So if you hear that, you just want to just ra- simply raise your hand right and say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. I see your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are God who sees all and knows all. Strengthen your people right now, Father. Guide them in truth. Direct them, O God, to the perfect peace and your perfect plan. Build them up, O God. Lord, please, strengthen their hearts. May they be obedient, Father, and trust in you, Lord. When things are coming that way that looks totally out of sorts, let them call upon your name and walk with you, Father. May they feel your presence and your peace and your hope and your joy. Lord, break every shackle, every sin, everything, oh God. Give them faith of a fear, oh God. Give them hope of a hopeless, oh God. Give them help when they need help, oh God. Draw them near to you, Father. Cause them to be more committed, more devoted, oh Father. Walk with you, Father. Say, God, we're going to trust you and walk with you. Father, deliver them. Sanctify them and strengthen them, oh God. Show them your ways, oh God. Make their home a home of peace and power and love and goodness, oh God. Let them stand firm in their faith and know who they're called to be, who they are in Christ Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless God. Bless God. Amen. I thank God for you being here, and I pray that what was spoken today, that something was said by the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God, that captured the cause, you say, wow. I can take that with me. I I can use that, amen. I can grow in that. Praise God, amen. Being a bold witness for Jesus Christ. Just a couple of quick announcements, because I want to make an announcement right here. Briefly here, I lost my little tablet. Okay, Okay, Holy Ghost, help me here. Uh, Second, uh, uh, October the uh, 12th, second Saturday, we're back at Joe Sampson Park, 4 to 6 p.m., being a bold witness, sharing the whole message.